Somebody next to you, walk to two or three people and tell them about the love of God. Amen. 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 Let's do that this morning. Amen. Give somebody a, a, a smile. Amen. If we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, all you saints of God. Yes, if we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. Yes, Lord, he will lift us. Yes, Lord, he will lift us. Oh, 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 yes, Lord, he will lift us. Your name, and we lift you. Glory of God, glory of God, glory of God, glory of God. We praise your name, we praise your name.
worship unto the Lord. Father, we bless your name, O God. We give you all the worship this morning, O God. We give you all the worship this morning, O God. Yes, Lord, you deserve to be worshipped, O God. We come before the throne this morning, O God. We come before the throne this morning, O God. We come before the throne this morning, O God. Yes, we come before the throne this morning, O God. And we say that you are worthy, O God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. You are worthy to be worshipped this morning, O God. Seek your glory, O God. Let it rise, let it rise, let it rise unto him this morning. We bow before the throne this morning, O God. Yeah, the day I bow, see, and the day I bow, see, and the day I bow, the day I bow, see, and the day I bow. Yeah, the day I bow, Saturday, I bow, the day I bow, see, and the day I bow, the day I bow, Saturday, I bow. Yeah, the day I bow, Saturday, I bow, the day I bow. Slow. 
Father, we declare you are all that matters this morning. You are all that matters this morning, oh God. Take your place, Lord. Take your place, oh God. We honor you. We glorify you. We lift up your name on high. We say continue to reign and rule. To you be your glory. To glory, Father. To glory, Son. And take glory, Holy Spirit, and all the saints who say, Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Give it up unto the Lord, somebody. Give it up. Oh, you can do better. And I want you to be in a prayer mood. Just be in a prayer mood as we call upon the children. Hallelujah. To pray for the children. All the children, can you come up here? All the children, please. Our God is an awesome God he reigns from Everyone, please, if you can. Oh, God, yes, I know. Let us be silent at the side. And I want you to be in the prayer mood right now. We are going to lift the souls and the bodies of our children to the hands of God. That the Spirit of God will continue to reign in their lives. That the power of His presence will continue to manifest in their lives. So at this time, we call upon our elder. Solomon Jeto to you know pour the blessings upon the children. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, one thing that makes me to like the woman Hannah was that she was a mom of prayer. And so this morning, these children are the future of the Church of Pentecost. They are the future of the world. And so being parents or parents-to-be, what you speak into their life stands. And so this morning, I would like you to stretch your hands towards them and say something in their lives as we pray if you don't have a child and you also desire one i want you to put one of your hands on your belly stretch the other hand and pray for god is a prayer answering god Father, into thy hands we commit these little ones. And we pray the Lord. Father, as you have given them as gift unto us, O God. Oh, may you bless them. Father, in their homes, may you bless them. In their schools, may you bless them, O God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sukarabasanduria katalababa. Surya kana babaita Shira bakanduria In the mighty name of Jesus we pray with thanksgiving Father in the mighty name of Jesus Lord you are God almighty everlasting father Father when you say something it comes to pass The other day father people were blocking children from coming to you And you said, if we want to enter into the kingdom of God, we should be like these ones. I pray that this morning you will bless this wonderful gift you have given to us. Father, the future of our church, the future of our nation, and the future of our world, O oh God. I pray, any enemy that stands on their way in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we break them. Lord, whatever you have spoken about their destiny, may it come to pass. I pray that, Lord, they will grow in wisdom. They will grow in knowledge. Father, that you will be their guide and their leader, O oh God. I pray that their destiny will come to pass as you have spoken, Lord. Father, Bible said the boy Jesus grew in wisdom and stature 
I pray that this one, that nothing will block their way in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit their parents into your hands, O God. That even if the parents of any of the, these ones is struggling, I pray that because of that, may you bless the family. And I pray that, Father, anybody who is in your sanctuary today, desiring to have one like this, but have cried unto you many days, nights, and their prayers have not been answered. This morning, Father, may you reveal yourself unto them. And may their miracles unfold in the name of Jesus. We pray and commit their teachers who devote their time, energy, and resources to bring them up in your way, into your hands. That may the teachers never lack, O oh God. I pray that you bless them and bless their families in the name of Jesus. And even in this nation that we are, O oh God, when these children are in school, may you bless them. Father, when they go out among the peers, Father, I pray, let them shine like the stars. And Lord, and let your presence reflect in them wherever they go. We thank you and we bless you for what you have done and what you are even going to do in their life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Give it up unto the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. It's time for them to go back to their class and their school class. Mm. Hallelujah. God is good. Oh, I don't feel the presence of somebody over here. God is good. God is good. Ah, if you cannot realize what is going on, just look at what is going on in the emergency room. Hallelujah. We have a lot of people who are on life support as we speak. So God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. You are all welcome into the presence of God. Hallelujah. And I want us to do something special because earlier on when we were doing, we didn't have a lot of people over here. Can you please be on your feet and welcome at least five people into the, hand, into the presence of God. Somebody just say somebody, welcome him into the, him, and, him or her into the presence of God. Welcome somebody. We are together again mm -hmm. with one Yeah. Happen. Something good mm -hmm. is in store. We are together again. We are together again. Just present the Lord. Huh? We are together Amen. again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Right now you can have your seat. Have your seat. Amen. You are welcome to the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So if today is the first time you come into the presence of God or you are coming to this assembly, this is PIWC, Silver Spring, Maryland. Hallelujah. And in this family or in this assembly, we have a very strong family bond. Hallelujah. So if today is the first time you are visiting or worshiping with us, we are pleading with you to think about joining us. Hallelujah. Because the Lord will take care of you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And I believe throughout the week or the month, the Lord has been so gracious unto our lives. I mean, he's been sharing our affairs. He's been so many wonderful things in our lives. And a lot of, I believe a lot of people have some tes testimonies to give unto the Lord. And because of that, this time we want to call upon our brother Richard Sabo, who has a testimony to give unto the Lord. Somebody give a clap. Offering unto the Lord. Praise God. You still? Man, I didn't hear nothing. You still? Yeah, don't forget that code. Use it all the time. You see everything is going on smooth, smooth, smooth. It can be hard, but if you call him, he's alive. I'm happy this morning to come to the house of my daddy because he loves me. Without that one, I cannot walk, I cannot talk, I cannot do nothing. That the reason he chose me, he chose you. If I'm looking back where I come from, 
It's very sad. But he make me alive until now. Without him, what I should, I should be. Every time I know that I'm, I'm in the big family. Even I don't have my mom, my dad. I know that in PRWC, my mom and dad, I belong to some family. Because when I, everywhere I am, they take care of me. Thank you, the Presidium. Thank you for the church. Last time I flew quickly to Togo. It's an emergency, but I got to do it. No money to buy the tickets. But like a, you teach me the code. I know the code. I flee easily and come back. There are a lot of things, but like he said that I should be, I should be with you until the end of the, the earth. You never disappoint me. You will never disappoint you. You still. I know his name. His name is Jesus. I know his name. His name is Jesus. He's a king. Oh, he's a Lord. Give it up. Yes, I give it up. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for the grace of the Lord upon his life. Amen and amen. So at this time, we have our honorable elders over here. And we have a district pastor in the seat steering the affairs of the church this morning. In the person of Dr. Kelebo Usuadu, hallelujah. Somebody give it up. Hallelujah. I believe we have also our district mother, Dr. Nancy over here. Hallelujah. Amen. You are also specially welcome into the house of God. Hallelujah. It's time to listen to the word of God. Hallelujah. It's time to listen to the word of God. We are also at the I mean, critical point of our lives or in the service of God. And uh, this man happens to be the former presiding editor of PRWC. The man full of grace of God and the presence of the Lord is upon his life. Hallelujah. He happens to be a husband of one wife and he has three beautiful kids. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody with a huge round of applause. Let's receive the man of God, Ada Kenneth Lewis. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord and to uh, um, have the opportunity to speak the word of God to God's people. It's, it's not a, a, a something that I take lightly at all. Amen. So we want to thank God for today for uh, that opportunity. Amen. Um, I want to also seize this opportunity to, I think last week I uh, received a small gift uh, from uh, the national head. So I think the word would reach him, but I still have to say thank you. Amen. Uh, it's been a great privilege to work with him since he came here in 2015. And he's a very, very uh, good man to work with. Amen. Um, um, we give glory to God for his life. It's regional week. Amen. Amen. And we want to uh, bless our regional head as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah, I think uh, I told him last week that um, he'll be traveling a lot. Uh, he's all, all of a sudden become the uh, second most important person in COP USA. Amen. Uh, all of a sudden. And so we want to bless the name of the Lord for his life. Amen. Uh, we want to thank our pastor as well. Amen. Uh, we give all the glory for his life as well. Uh, he told me what to speak on today. So whatever I'm going to be saying is something that he asked me to say. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And so I'm not saying anything that he has not sanctioned. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I want to bless our two presiding elders as well. God bless you so much. Amen. Um, last week, we had a powerful word from the Lord about uh, um, raising godly families. Amen. And uh, we had uh, a very effective word from our mama, Nancy. Amen. She's a very effective preacher. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A very good communicator. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for his life. I'm not sure I can match that today. Uh, but I'm going to ask the Holy Ghost to help. He's the only one that can help me. And so I pray this morning that you listen to this Gambian boy as he gives you the word of God this morning. Amen. And speaking of Gambia, it's our Independence Day today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. 1965, 59 years of independence. So I think God is good that he gives me opportunity to uh, speak on a day today, our Independence Day. And so we want to join all Gambians uh, to congratulate them for uh, Independence Day. Amen. Amen. And we joined uh, uh, the people as uh, they celebrate. And in the words of our national anthem, it says, For the Gambia, our homeland, we strive and walk and pray. That's the line. It says that all may live in unity, freedom, and peace each day. It says, let justice guide our action towards a common good and join our diverse people to prove man's brotherhood. It says, we pledge our firm allegiance, our promise we renew. And it says, keep us great God of nations to the Gambia ever true. Amen. Amen. And so we pray that God in his grace as we have spent 59 years, that God would use one-tenth of that to redeem the dream. Amen. Amen. And the pledge of independence. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, last but not the least, I want to uh, say a few words for, uh, to uh, another uh, Gambian great woman of God uh, that uh, happens to be my wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I need to score some points, Pastor. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, um, two weeks ago, it was her birthday. And uh, she was 50 years old. That was... Uh, so, uh, she uh, has spent... 25 of that life with me. Uh, I still don't understand why, but God bless her. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, it's not a very easy thing to be married to me, but uh, we want to thank God for her life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray that God would add another 50 to your years. Amen. 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 And that the the, this 50 will be even 100 times better than the last one. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to uh, speak today, as I said, on uh, sacrificial giving. And I think I have some slides there. Uh, sacrificial giving and um, tithing and financial management. Amen. Uh, sacrificial giving, tithing, and financial management. A people of God, as we under the theme, a people of God unleashed to transform their world. Amen? A people of God unleashed to transform their world. Let us uh, bow our heads quickly as we pray. Uh, so, Father, we, we thank you and we bless your name. And we pray that may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, today. For you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. 
Psalm 24, uh, um, from the NLT, Psalm 24, from the NLT, if you can uh, um, put that up for us quickly, uh, Psalm 24. See if I can pick it up quickly. I think what it says is that uh, the if somebody can read it for me, uh, Psalm twenty four. It says, "The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it." And I'm going to read the whole thing. It says, uh, verse two. It says that, um, he, for he had laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. And uh, who may climb the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? It says, uh, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. Verse 5, it says that they will receive the Lord's blessings and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. And uh, verse 6 says, such people may seek you and worship you in your presence, O God of Jacob. And then verse 7, it says, open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Amen. And he says, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord invincible in battle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Open up ancient gates. Open up ancient doors. And let the king of glory enter. And uh, he says, who is the king of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. Amen. Amen. He is the king of glory. So I'm going to be talking today, I'm going to break this up uh, into four parts. Uh, so I will talk about quickly, very quickly, I will talk about tithes, I will talk about offering, I will talk about gifts, and then I will talk about um, arms. Amen? Hopefully I'll be able to do it in the next uh, half an hour very, very quickly. Amen? So as I'm talking about it, I would interject uh, 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 with th in three areas. So number one, I will uh, talk about the law of force mention. It's just a theological term that tells you what the original intent of God was when he devised the concept, these four things that I'm going to talk about. And then I'm going to talk about how that is practiced in our church, the church of Pentecost, how it is observed and how it is practiced in the Church of Pentecost. And then finally, uh, we will look at some best practices, uh, uh, um, you know, um, looking at the four things that we are going to talk about here. Amen. So first of all, um, you want to understand that, I, I, and I read this psalm for a reason, uh, that 100%, I'm not the one saying it, it's the word of God that says it. 100% of everything on earth here belongs to God. Praise the Lord. The, the psalm told you that. He says, uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So when God is talking, when you are reading the Bible, pay attention to the words. And look at what God is saying in his words. Very important. There are two things that he draws out there. He talks about the earth and he talks about the world. Two when God is talking about the earth and the world, he's addressing two different entities uh, that are here. So when, you talk, when God talks about the earth, he's talking about the physical signs. He's talking about the composition of the earth, the physical earth. Amen. And he's telling you that all the real estate space and all the astronomical space above your head and under your feet belongs to him. Praise the name of the Lord. So, understand then that there is nothing that you own. We don't own anything here. The scriptures tells us, and Paul puts it to us, he says that, for we came into this world with nothing, 
and it will, it's certain that we will carry nothing out. So nothing you have here, not your bank account, not the money in your house, uh, not the car that you used to drive to this church today, not this clothes that I'm wearing, nothing, is, nothing belongs to me. Praise the Lord. And nothing also uh, belongs to you. And when God addresses the world, he's talking about the people and the, and, uh, and, and the demographics, the people that actually live in it. So he's saying that the physical earth belongs to me and everybody else that is here also belongs to me. And so, uh, so, we are, so what God is telling us is that 100% of everything belongs to him. Amen. 100% of everything belongs to him. Praise the Lord. And so the first thing I'm going to talk about is tithing. Amen. So, uh, tithing. And I'm going to take a reading uh, from uh, uh, Genesis chapter 14 and verse 18. But before I say that, uh, let me talk about a few things first. Some of the slides that I'm going to be using here are the ones that uh, was presented at the Global Ministers Conference. So, some of the slides are borrowed. Amen. But not everything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, uh, so this is the theme, a people of God unleashed to transform their world. Uh, uh, in tithing and in financial management. What I'm actually, what I'll be talking about more is financial management, more than these four things. It's, I'm, 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 and, I'm, and I'm laying the principles of financial management based on these four things that uh, God has given us that I'll be talking about today. Let's go to the next one, all right? Uh, let's go to the next slide. So, in the, screen, in the Bible, 500 verses on faith, 500 verses on prayer, 2,000 verses on money. So, you know the emphasis where God is putting it. It is important. Uh, let's go to the next slide. The next slide says that in the gospel, out of 10 verses, out, 10 verses out of the gospel deal directly with money. Uh, 288 of them in all. Let's move on to the next one. And then uh, it tells us that uh, these are the four things that I'm going to be talking about. So open your Bibles for me to Genesis chapter 14 and verse 18 very quickly. All right? Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 to 20. It says that then Melchizedek, uh, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And he was priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham God Most High, uh, of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. All right? So underline that word possessor. We, that, is, that emphasizes what I've been talking about. That 100% of everything that is on earth, 100% of everything you have belongs to God. It does not belong to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then he continues, says, Blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And, as, and then immediately he said that, he said Abraham gave him a tithe, one-tenth of everything that he has. Amen. Now, when you read the Bible, you need to understand what God is saying, all right? And read the whole thing. So, if you read the entire uh, chapter 14, there is a reason for that, all right? But I want to point out a few things uh, that uh, when God appeared uh, and Melchizedek, we know, I don't want to go into the detail, I don't have time to talk about Melchizedek. But Melchizedek was like God appearing to Abraham, all right? When he appeared to Abraham, he spoke to him in quotes. And you, it is up to you when God is speaking to you to decode what God is saying so that your head will understand. There are three things he told him there, if you look at this passage, underline it. He says, number one, he says, I want you to understand that I am your protector, number one. All right? Then the second thing he told him that is coded in this message, he says, I want you to understand that I am your provider. I am the source of all your provision. That is number two. And then the third thing he told him that is decoded here. It says that I want you to understand 
that is only me that can guarantee your prosperity. And so that goes to all of us, all right? So number one, that uh, it is God who is our protector, all right? Number two, it is God who is our provider. The source of our provision comes from God. And then number three is that it is only God that can underwrite your prosperity for you. Praise the name of the Lord. And so let me jump on very quickly. I want you to understand what was going on uh, in Abraham's time at that particular time. If you read the whole chapter, chapter 14, all right? So if you read the whole chapter in 14, you'll see that God gives you a description of a king called Chedorlaomer. okay? If I'm pr uh, pronouncing his name right, okay? So for, uh, for, so for ease uh, of understanding, let me just, I'll just call him Ched, all right? King Ched, all right? So what King Ched, what was going on at the time is that King Ched was a very wicked king. And he has, he's been, and he's, he was very powerful as well. And he was conquering everybody and all towns and cities and kingdoms that are around his realms. He was conquering and he continued to conquer. Praise the Lord. And then he said, the Bible tells us that he has subjected all of the kings that he has conquered to very, very harsh conditions. Very, very wicked king. But the scriptures tell us that Abraham was exempted from all of this because of his connection with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we as children of Abraham are exempted. You see the picture that I'm trying to paint. All right. So the world that we are in uh, puts us sometimes in very, very bad conditions. And the scriptures tell us that the devil, who is the kingdom, uh, the king of this world, is a very wicked man as well. All right. And so, but if you come under the authority of God, then you are exempt from that oppression. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what God is teaching us here in Genesis chapter 14. All right. So the story continues that Chad uh, was, he, he went on a, on a slaycation campaign. Praise the Lord. And then when, whilst he was gone on, a, on the slaycation campaign, five of his kings that were under him rebelled. Because they have been under his dominion and control for 13 years. And he says that for 12 years they were under the control and domination of him. And on the 13th year they rebelled. So when they rebelled, uh, he was obviously not pleased about it. He came back and marshaled his army. Now, but Abraham didn't have particularly a dog in that fight. Because uh, he was exempt from Chad's brutality. So, but the only reason why Abraham went into fight with Ched was because of his nephew Lot, who has broken away from Abraham and decided to go on his own. I want to talk to you about Lot for uh, two minutes. When he broke away from Abraham, he lost almost everything he had, and Ched conquered him and took everything he had away. So, you see, if you do not come under the control and under the unction of God, I can tell you today, I am 100% guaranteed you are going to be a loser. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm telling you that right now today. Okay? So, if you, are, if, you, if you don't put everything, and that's the reason why we give everything we have to God. All right? It is not because we are crazy. It's because we know that God can protect it better. Because he's a better protector of everything that you have. Praise the Lord. And so, so Lot, uh, Abraham had to go to war. And then this man appeared to him called Melchizedek. The first thing that Melchizedek gave to Abraham was bread and wine. It's not like he doesn't have bread and wine in his house. But he was sending him a message. All right? So the scripture tells us in Paul, uh, in the apostle Paul tells us in Galatians, he says that this gospel then was first preached to Abraham. Praise the name of the Lord. And so it was the gospel that was being preached to him. What did Jesus do when he came, uh, uh, well, before, before he was taken away? The scriptures tell us that he gave bread, he gave us, he broke bread and he broke wine. Signifying the body and blood of, his, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said the gospel 
was preached to him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he gave him that bread and wine. And Abraham gave everything, uh, one tenth of all he had to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, uh, so there were, when Abraham gave that, he was, God was telling Abraham that, look, even though I have protected you from the wickedness of shed, he says, I want you to understand something. That you cannot take my relationship with you for granted. Praise the Lord. And so that is the reason why God inspired him to give the tithe. Because he, he, in, in, giving, in Abraham giving uh, uh, the tithe uh, to uh, Melchizedek, Abraham was confirming that number one, God was his protector. Number two, God was his, the source of all his provision. And number three, that God was underwriting his prosperity. Praise the Lord. And uh, let me tell you, by the way, while Shed was conquering everybody, the one city that he never got a chance to conquer, the one place that he never got a chance to conquer was Salem. The scriptures tell us that uh, Melchizedek was king of what? King of Salem. Okay? What is the meaning of Salem? Salem means peace. That is the one place that he never controlled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let me tell you, folks, uh, that when you give your belongings to God, the one place that the enemy would not enter is what you have given to God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so that is the inspiration then uh, behind tithing. That is the inspiration then behind tithing. Let me jump very quickly uh, to the other part, uh, the offering. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 4 to 7. The scripture tells us that Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel's and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, you will be accepted. And if you do not do well, sin lies at your door. And it desires, and his desire is for you, uh, but you should rule over it. Amen. So if you look at the scripture, I told you we are we're talking about the law of force mentioned. Look at the place where this uh, offering was first mentioned. First of all, uh, 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 Cain initiated the offering, but God rejected his offering. So what is the reason why God rejected Cain's offering? The reason, I, I, so I think the re offering uh, depends on motivation. What is your motivation for giving the offering? All right. What was Cain's motivation for giving the offering? And what was and when Abel saw that that was a good thing that he did, he also went and gave an offering, and his motivation was better. And so God was able to read behind uh, uh, the intention of Cain and behind the intention of Abel, and he accepted one of them and he rejected the other. Amen. He rejected the other. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, and so, uh, if you look at uh, the Hebrew word for offering, the root word for offering in Hebrew is called kavod. All right? Kavod. And so, when you are giving an offering, uh, it, uh, kavod means honor, it means respect, it means reverence, it means importance, it means distinction or glory. All right? So when you are giving an, uh, an, uh, an offering, uh, are you giving honor to God? Are you giving respect to God? Praise the Lord. Are you giving reverence to God? Are you, uh, uh, are you attaching importance to what you are doing? And is, is the offering distinct? Is there a distinction in your offering? Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you something uh, uh, short. Remember that offering that we did here, that, that uh, Christmas offering uh, that pastor was telling you to give, and some of you didn't want to give. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Anytime there is an opportunity for an offering, it's an opportunity for blessing. Hallelujah. It's an opportunity for blessing. And so <clears throat> when I was standing here, uh, the day before, I know that there was going to be an offering, like I told you. 
So I had prepared myself to come and give. As a matter of fact, I prepared two different amounts. And then I came and sat down. And as I was sitting, as I sat down here, uh, the Lord spoke to me to change the off, to switch it around, and to give something different from what I have originally given. And so, I, you know, a pastor was here, I came, I, I, and I gave the offering here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I needed the services of a lawyer. And uh, pastor, I think pastor mentioned something like that that day. Maybe you can't remember. But, um, and uh, I went uh, to three lawyers. One of them charged me 5000 The other one charged me 8000 And the other one charged me $7,500. All right? Then I sat down and prayed. <laughs> and then I spoke to, I spoke to three elders here, three of them. One of them told me, and I'm not going to tell you their names. One of them told me uh, that he's praying with me. The other one uh, told me that, look, I don't think you need to pay these people. And then the third one called me to his house and sat me down for five hours and showed me what to do. And my problem was solved. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, so that is something that I'm telling you. That happened like, uh, like two weeks ago. Okay? So that's a testimony. So, look, when they tell you to bring an offering, don't be sitting down and bad-mouthing the thing. You understand what I'm saying? So, you see, uh, let me go back to, uh, to Lot. You see, don't, be like, don't lotify yourself. I'm, that's a new term. That's my term that I just already told you. Okay? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you see, Lot, he lost everything he had because he decided to withdraw from uh, God's protection. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Paul was teaching, and he says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who have told you not to obey the word of God? Praise the Lord. And so he, he was telling them that. He says, So pay you, sometimes we go to the internet and you are listening to all of these uh, uh, self prescribed and self-proclaimed preachers teaching you about the word of God. That some of them are not even filled with the Holy Ghost. And you, a child of God, full of the Holy Ghost, you don't know the word of God to read the word of God yourself so that God will open your eye to show you what you have to do concerning the management of your finances and the management of God's property that he has placed in your hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So tithing is not for the benefit of God. Neither is giving. Because God doesn't need anything from us. Tithing and giving and offering is for your benefit and for my benefit. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the reason why. That is the inspiration behind it. So that you can manage the finances and the resources that God has placed in your hands properly. Because God does not like waste. Amen. Praise the Lord. In, uh, in, uh, in, uh, you look, I have always uh, 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 been tithing. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I gave my life to the Lord in 1988, I moved to the Church of Pentecost in 1990. I was working for the government and, uh, as a court clerk. And then uh, uh, I was supposed to go to the uh, university, university of Sierra Leone, the, the law school there. I applied twice and they rejected me. And then my government, Gambia government, gave me scholarship twice. And I could not get acceptance to law school. And so I, I decided that, well, it's not going to happen. So I decided to apply to the bank. And I applied to the bank. And when I got into the bank, uh, my pay was increased 10 times. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Apostle Bedu, God bless him, he called me that day when I told him that, Papa, I've gotten a new job. He told me, he said, Olu, come here. That's what he, he, he wouldn't cry. When he wants to speak to me, serious stuff, he doesn't tell me, Ken, he said, Olu. Then I know that he needs to talk, that I should open my ears very well. He says that in this church, 
it says, one of the things, the covenant that we have is tithing. It says, if you want God to bless you, you have to pay tithe from that blessing that he's given you. Make sure that you are faithful. I said, yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I can count. I think, uh, uh, there are, uh, and I've, I'm not going to stand here and say I have not missed tithe before. I have. Five times I can count. It's not more than that. In my entire life, since 1990 to today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But in 2013, I had a reappraisal of tithing. Because I was, my finances were not going well. And everything was going down. And, and I sat down with God. And I asked God, why is it that I'm tithing and I'm not seeing any progress? On God, until God told me that you are not managing your finances very well. Praise the Lord. And he told me what to do. And I could not, I could not even trust myself. I, I took myself to an el one elder in this church. And I told him, look at my finances. I'm making you uh, my accountability partner. I, and he told me, he, we put together a plan. And I told him that, look, I can't do this. He says, let's stick to the plan. He says, if you cannot do it, come to me and I'll write you a check. Praise the Lord. I've only used it once. I've never used it again. From 2014 up till now. Today is what we are. 2024, it's been 10 years. Never change. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's jump to the third one and talk about gifts very quickly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody gives gifts. Everybody wants to receive gifts. But I want to also let you know that God is the first giver. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 and 30, he says that God said that, See, I have given you every herb that yields seeds, which is one of the face of the earth, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seeds. To you it shall be for food, and in verse 30, he says that also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in there in which that is, there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it is so. And in verse 31, he says, Then God saw that everything that he made was good, and indeed it was very good. So in the evening and the morning came, and it was the sixth day. So God was the first giver of everything. So he created everything and he gave it to us and he says, manage it. Okay? Uh, essentially, that's what, what he said. Praise the Lord. Now, in Matthew chapter 2, you know the story of Jesus when he was born. That uh, the three king of, well, we, it's not three. Maybe there might be more. Uh, but the kings came and uh, they worshipped him. And they gave him gifts. If you look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 10 to 12, it tells you that. And they gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So gifts are given to everybody. All right? So the underlying motivation for gift giving is love. All right? So I'm sure those people were motivated by love and honor for this king that they have not known but they want to meet. Praise the Lord. And the reason why God gave us what he gave us in, in Genesis, as I've read uh, in chapter 1, is because of his love for us. And so gift giving is something that is encouraged in the house of God. Something that is encouraged in our church as well. Uh, something that we practice. We give gifts to everybody. We give gifts to the pastors. Praise the Lord. If you have not been doing that, you should be doing that. Hallelujah. Uh, we give gifts to the elders. We give gifts to each other. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I quite remember... Uh, uh, um, um, I had that experience. I was in Ghana uh, uh, twice in 1992 and 1994. So when I was in Ghana in 1992, uh, I was staying at the transit quarters. I think the transit quarters is, by, is in, close to Kaneshi, some place they call Kaneshi. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I remember. Hallelujah. Amen. If that, near that big market that is there, that's where I was. Uh, and so... I had 
nothing in my pocket that day. And I had, I had this Liberian friend that I was, that time the Liberians were there. And, uh, and uh, I saw him off. When I came back, the woman told me, say, hey, where have you been? And I said, I, I saw my friend off. He says, look, the, uh, uh, this, the general secretary was here. Uh, then, then it was uh, Apostle Amor. He says he was looking for you. Uh, he left an envelope for you. When I opened it, it was like a huge gift that has been given to me. Praise the Lord. And then he told me next day, they said you should go to the, uh, to the headquarters office. Uh, the, uh, the IMD wants to see you. So uh, I went there uh, and went to his office. And he also gave me a gift. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's called gifting. <laughs> Motivated by love. Hallelujah. And gratefully received. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God. Let me jump on to the last one. Uh, 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 that is arms very quickly uh, so that we can, we can pray. All right? Uh, let me read. The, turn to, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 15, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15, it says, and in, if you look at that scripture there, Leviticus chapter 23, it says that when you reap the harvest of your land, it says, do not reap the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor so that the foreigner residing among you, uh, for the foreigner residing among you, I am the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We're talking about financial management in giving. Hallelujah. It is a sin for you to spend all your money every month. I'm telling you today, if you don't know that today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just because of this scripture. And so, in Deuteronomy chapter 15, uh, there's something very interesting that God was saying there. God made three statements. In, chapter se in, uh, in verse 7, he says that there should be no one poor amongst you. He says, for the Lord your God will greatly bless you in the land that he's given you. All right? So there should be no one poor amongst you. Okay? So this is the thing. And then in verse uh, 7, uh, verse 4, that's what it says. Verse 7, it says, in, let me go to verse 11 first. He says that there will always be someone poor in the land. Uh, that is why I am commanding you that you should share freely with the poor and with the Israelites that are in need. Amen. And then in verse 7, it says, but if there is anyone poor in your towns, when you arrive in the land, the Lord your God is giving you. Do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards them. So this is talking about arms, okay? So why did God say that there should be nobody poor? And then in another apparently seemingly contradictory statement, he says that uh, there, there will always be poor people in the land. Why did he say that? I, he said that because of one thing. Because ha, there is this song that they say, Everybody has been fooled before. All right? So uh, he, God knew that people are foolish. That at some point in time, you will be a fool. Have you been a fool before? Hallelujah. Everybody has been a fool before. Have you acted foolishly before? You have been foolish before. Hallelujah. And have you been fooled before? Of course you have. As long as you have been living long in this earth, you will be fooled at some point. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nobody is exempted from that. And so God has made provision for your foolishness so that he can deliver you from the foolishness. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why he says that it is a wicked thing if you, have, if you are paid every month and you spend 100% of your money so that when Kenneth Lewis come, God forbid. <laughs> and I come to pastor. I say, pastor, I need money. Pastor say, I don't have anything. That's a wicked thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then you would have committed a sin. 
Because God told you not to spend all the money. And you spent it all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, so at some point in time, somebody will be fooled. So you will be a fool. And God has made provision for that. And that is the reason why God instituted the arms. But it is more, uh, there's even something more interesting than that. If you read Genesis, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 15, it also tells you that every seven years, God cancels all the debts. Every seven years. That's another provision that he has given you. Praise the Lord. Every seven years, he says every debt must be canceled. The only exception he made is that he said, if you are not an Israelite, you cannot cancel. You can decide not to cancel their debt. What does that tell you about the principle of giving and tithing again? That God makes provision for his people. Praise the Lord. God makes provision for his people. And not only that, if you look at the scripture further, he says that every 50 years, not only are you supposed to cancel the debt, he says that every land that you have taken that has been mortgaged to somebody must be returned back. Praise the Lord. And not only that, if you have been a fool and you have mismanaged your money and you have bankrupted yourself and then you have sold yourself as slavery, you must be free after 50 years. So what does that tell you? You see, if after 50 years you are still a fool, it means that you most likely will die a fool. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor, poor people will go to heaven. We, we know that, right? Jesus told us that uh, in the story of Davis and Lazarus. We, we know that much. But I'm not sure whether fools will go there. So if you are a fool and you are doing what Paul is saying, oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you not to obey the word of God, and you die a fool, there is no hope for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me conclude, uh, and then we can pray. Amen. Let me conclude, then we can pray. In 2012, I was still a realtor. For the first time, I made, I looked at my, the statement of my income, and it was 99, I was $175 shy of 100 grand in 2012. And then, uh, remember those days when we used to have care group, right? We had a care group in, uh, uh, in Yvonne's house, uh, Bafo. I don't know whether he's here. There was a man of God who used to join us for a care group. He was called Otis Walker. He passed away about a few years ago. A man of God, full of the Holy Ghost. He can, he can, he can tell you a word and it, you, you'll be sure it will come to pass. Okay? He passed away a few years ago. We were having care group there in 2012. He said, he told us that as we are sitting there, he says that I see gold coins falling from heaven. I see gold coins falling from heaven. And he, I, I think uh, I, I, the, the prophecy was repeated again one more time. Praise the Lord. 2012. I was driving in Rockville Pike. I told you I made 99000 that year. I was driving on Rockville Pike. And I, I was approaching the Bank of America, you know, uh, at, going towards North Bethesda. And I heard the voice of the Lord. He told me, Ken, he says, you need to invest. And the, the mistake I made was not... That is why when God speaks to you, you must open your ear and you must pray. And the mistake I made was that I did not go to God and ask him what I should be investing in. Hallelujah. 
That was in 2012. I listened to NPR all of the time. And, and in 2009, what happened in 2009? 2009 was uh, uh, the, the Great Recession. All right? I'm going to make a statement here. And I'm going to tell you, as Christians, we must be wise and we must open our eyes to what God is doing. All right? So I'm going to tell you something. That there is a business cycle that governs this earth. It is on the scripture. If you look at the book of Genesis, Abraham was affected by a business cycle. Jacob was affected by a business cycle. So was Isaac. And we are still being affected by it today. So in 2008, there was the Great Recession, right? Okay. And so we recovered around 2011. And then in 2009, there was a, somebody created what they call Bitcoin at that time. Put the last slide up for me before we pray and I, we pray and finish. And I'll show you something right there. Did you see that chart over there? You see the chart right there. Did you see 2010 right there? See 2011, 2012, when I had my 100,000. Did you see that right there? Praise the Lord. What was the value of Bitcoin in 2012? It was about 30 cents, I think, uh, uh, or 13, $13, somewhere around that. $13, all right? In 2013, all right, it went up to $1,238 in 2013. And then it started spiking up from there. Okay? So this world is governed by business cycle. There is another one that is about to happen. I don't know what it is. It is up to you to go and ask God. One just ended in 2020. There is another one coming. Praise the Lord. I can guarantee you that. So don't be a fool. <laughs> and fail to invest in the things of God. Praise the Lord. Uh, but listen to what God is telling you. And be part of uh, what God is doing. Don't skip your tithe. All right? Uh, don't skip your tithe. I'm going to tell you what I do every month. All right? Every month, every time I get paid, every, I'm telling you this, every time I get paid, the first thing, I don't spend any money. I don't pay nobody. I don't pay Chase. I don't pay Bank of America. I don't pay nobody. I let the money sit there for a day. The first thing I do is to write my 10% tithe and put it away. That's the first thing I do. And then, the other, then the rest, what I, what I do next is to figure out where all that money is going to, as God has instructed me. Some to savings, some to investment, some to wherever it is that God has directed me. All right? And so do the same thing so that God would bless you. We are about to give an offering. Don't just sit there and say that I'm not going to give. All right? God has given you 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week. He has put something in your hands. All right? Trust God today and see how the Lord will bless you. Let us be on our feet as we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, be lifted above all other gods.
lifted. Oh, oh be lifted. Above all other gods. have belongs to you and maybe uh, you have been trying to do things by yourself and you have not been a good steward of the resources that God has placed in your hands we want to pray this morning and we want to say Lord have mercy upon us and may you forgive us for mismanaging the resources that you have placed in our hands and please Give us a fresh start. Let's Give pray. Fresh start, Lord. Lift, lift up your, your voices fresh and pray. Start, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray, oh God Almighty, today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are asking for your help, oh God Almighty. Father, oh God, we repent, oh God Almighty. Father, of this management. Lord, Father, of the resources that you have placed in our hands. We are praying, O God Almighty, in the name of the Lord Jesus. May you have mercy upon us today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May you have mercy upon us today. And may you forgive us, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless your name, O God. And we give you all the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, O oh God. Remember what God said. He says that I am your protector. I am your protector. I am the source of your provision. Yes. And I am the one that can guarantee your prosperity. Oh, thank you. And so we are going to the Lord today. Mm. And we are saying, God be our protector. Be our protector Lord. God be the source of our provision. And God on the right our prosperity. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift up your voices and bless the name of the Lord. Pray this prayer to the Lord today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we are blessing your name of God Almighty this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are praying, oh God Almighty. Father, oh God, you spoke to us, oh God, through your word. And you said that, oh God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, that be our protector, oh God. 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 Be our provider, oh God. Be our provider, oh God. And we pray today, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that may you all the right of prosperity today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless your name, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you the praise of God Almighty. We bless your name, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my Lord and my God, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the adoration. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, O God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you, O God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this last prayer and say, Lord. 100% of what I have belongs to you. Belongs to you I turn it over to you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I own nothing. 
and I give it all to you. Let's lift up your voice and pray and say, Lord, I turn my resources, I turn my assets, I turn my liabilities, I turn my debts over to you, O oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless you today and I give you all the glory. Take all of God Almighty. Take all for it belongs to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless your name, O oh God. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Give it up. Give it up unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe our elder has spoken volumes about how to tithe our tithing and offerings. Doing the things of God. I mean investing in the house of God. So I believe he's spoken volumes about it. And I'm not going to stand over here to talk today about it. It's time to offer unto our Lord. Bring our tithe and offering. Can you please project the handles and the links? We send our tithes and often. And I, I don't want you to you know, write your check without praying over it. Don't do that. Please, as you write your checks, your offerings, bow your head and commit it into the hands of God. You've got to do that. The Lord, you have been faithful, God, that your, thy word says, I shall offer unto you, and you open the heaven windows unto me. So just pray over the tithes. And the offering, somebody, you've got to do that. And I want you to be faithful. Because we serve a faithful God. Say something to God. Say something to God. That Lord, I'm being faithful unto you. I'm offering unto you. And I expect your blessings. Worship team. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah, we pray. The Lord, Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. God is good, and all the time. Hallelujah. Let's bless our elder one more time. Uh -huh. Let me help you interpret if you were sitting there and you felt offended or you felt like, ah, this is making me a little bit itchy. It means that God is talking to your heart. If you don't know how to interpret it, that is how to interpret it. Anytime that you come to the house of God, the word of God should be such that it moves you to take an action. Hallelujah. The word of God should be such that it begins, to, it begins to prune you. And it begins to teach you that maybe I am on the wrong track. And I need to change my track. Hallelujah. Okay. So, Elder, once again, God bless you. I picked up one thing from what he was saying. He said, in a certain year, he had an accountability partner. Do you want to get one? Somebody said, yeah. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, God is interested in your finances and so are we as your church leaders. Because the fact is that if you are doing well, the church will also do well. The financial systems of God is such that it is based on his people doing well. And as his people do well, God specifically asks that come and give me something. Hallelujah. Amen. So most of the givings in the Bible, they were initiated by God. But also men also with a heart. That was very soft towards God, also initiated giving. I pray that this morning your heart will be soft towards God. Hallelujah. So permit me to speak to your heart because uh, this morning I'm not going to struggle like I did on Christmas. Yeah, I went to him and I repented. I'm like, God, I'm not going to struggle like that again. That, is, that was my personal resolution. Because I realized that sometimes you think that it is what you are telling the people. But I want to speak to your heart that this church has run on the giving of people. And I have been around. I'm not old. But as I was growing up in the church, I made it a point to study the history of the church. And there are some things we tell you from the standpoint that the church of Pentecost is a good place that you can invest your money. It's a fact. And many people have dared to try it. And if you've been around for a long time, you begin to see that, you begin to see generations. I've seen generations. My grandfather was an idol worshiper. And he turned to God. Just like that, his story changed. And, and you just look in the church. Even look at you. You sitting here. Yeah. And if you have a lot, a, just a little bit of history in the church, look at your beginning. Look at now. And look at where God is taking you. Isn't that a good future? So why wouldn't you, or why would you want to struggle to invest in the things of God? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So as you have been saying, um, we want to have a church that sometimes we don't want to be doing a whole lot of giving because really we want to manage our time well. We want to do this once and for all so that there will be times coming where um, for those days that we, have, we do the, uh, the program and we have to raise offering, we are not going to do it. So what we as a region, I think last a couple of weeks ago, I decided, I explained that if we need an explanation, I can explain it a little bit further. That as a church, we have a couple of offerings that we do give. Hallelujah. One of them is the internal missions offering. McKeon's mission offering. We also have the ministries offering. And we all, the ministries is that we have about five ministries. So if you combine all those offerings, it's quite a few. And we realize that sometimes we come together and on those days, we tend to also raise money. And we are like, why don't we put it together? And at PIWC, I think we went ahead of that. And we started really um, combining the offering. Um, but as we came together, we also realized in that PIWC Maryland, we are big players when it comes to the region, hallelujah. So we had budgeted, I think we were trying to raise a certain amount. We didn't reach it though, but we also budgeted a certain amount, which was about 15,000 towards all these offerings that we were gonna do. But one thing that we realized was that it could not reach the amount that we were looking for. And so we, this morning we wanna top it up by 20,000, hallelujah. And I, I believe that um, we can do it. We look at this room, look at how God has blessed you. You give from a place of your heart, hallelujah. If you struggle to give, that means that you need to question the source, which is your heart. Hallelujah. So this morning, um, we want to give towards all these offerings put together so that come um, the rest of the year, when the ministry weeks come, we just come, we celebrate it, 
we have time to pray and do the other things that we want to do. And also, Easter time comes, we're also going to do another giving as PIWC, that is towards the nation. Hallelujah. Um, so please um, just uh, take a minute, pray over whatever you want to give. Uh, many people have already given. I'm not, um, this morning, as I was sitting here, I already gave. Some have already given. I know myself, I, the regional head, actually. It started with all the district pastors in the region. We have all given. Hallelujah. Let me, let me talk to you about Christiana Obo. That is, if you want to know a little bit about the history of the church. James McKeon. Who knows James McKeon? I don't know him personally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are many of us that really got to meet him. And I do know about Christian Albo. Yeah. And these are people, when you look at their kids now, Christian Albo in particular, she's one person that we can reference. God knows why James McKeon probably didn't have kids. Yeah, God knows. Because maybe somebody will come and be like, oh, this church belongs to me and all that. So we see that in the church's history, the first patriarchs, most of them didn't have kids. But now you look at them and they have kids all over. James McKeon has too many people named after him. MK, MK, um, Yabua, even my own cousin is named after him. Many people named after him. Hallelujah. And Safu too didn't have kids. So right after then, God opened the womb. He says that now you can go and have your own. Amen. So this church is really... It's a church where it is based on sacrifice. Hallelujah. Sacrificial giving. We see the story of Christiana, but we should not be missing. We should tell that story. So that if you are in this church now, you will know that this church, it is people that decided. Christiana, Obo, for instance, when James McKeon came in the year 1938 with 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Can you establish a church? But look at what God has done. Hallelujah. God had to connect him with certain people who understood and was divine connections. Hallelujah. And today it's your turn. So please, when we say that, give, open your heart. And say, the Lord, it's for a reason that you have blessed me. And don't say that, I, I, I'm, I'm too poor. Some will be like, oh, I'm a student. Listen, I've been through it all. I was a student. I was struggling to give. And at one time, God spoke to me, Caleb, you need to give. And that was a turning point in my life. I, opened, I finished school. I started working. I was making all this money. And I was like, you know what? If I pay my tithes, that's it. And I, thank God I met a wife. Every time I come, I have a dollar. Making good money. I come, put in a dollar. I said, Lord, I've paid my tithes. And my wife started challenging me. And at some point, I repented. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So wife, challenge your husband. Husband, challenge your wives. Because in that home, there will always be one person who is a little bit stingy. Sometimes you need to join your faith together. And move. And let the hand of God move. Hallelujah. I, believe, I think that was one of the things God was testing me on. It wasn't until God knew that, Caleb, if I asked for money, you could give it to me. I think that was one of the hurdles I had to cross before I came into ministry. Every time you think, oh, your money is yours. But Elder has made a point. God is your provider. That's right. God is what? Protector. Your protector. And God is your guarantor. guarantor. You, I won't guarantee. The other day, somebody called me that I'm going to get a, <laughs> I'm going to get a house. Can you guarantee? I said, oh, no, I won't. Yeah. Too many bad stories. But with God, there is no bad story. Yeah, many people have been burned. With God, you will not be burned. You have good returns on your investment. So please close your eyes. It's already 11. And we are trying to raise 20. Many people have already given. The elders have given. I have given. Elder Labi has given 1,000. Elder um, Dr. Labi Mensa has given 500. Mama. Many people have given. Many people have given. Many Mama is Siama. Who else? Please, let me mention their names so that we can all... Elder, uh -huh. Elder, join me. At some point, you mention all their names so that people we know that people are already giving. Hallelujah. And think about what you want to give. Think about what you want to give. Think about what you want to give. Only 20,000. The challenge is that sometimes you think that, oh, as for me, my little don't count. As for me, I'm a student. As for me, I'm trying to get married. Listen, God is the guarantor. Hallelujah. God is the guarantor. God is the guarantor. Pray over that amount that you want to give. And say, the Lord, you've been good to me. This morning, we, are, we, are, we, we want to raise 20,000. Somebody, I pray that you are moved. Pray over it. You just pray over it and you come and give it. Amen. Pray over it and come give it. If by chance your heart is also touched. Elder, thank you for that testimony. It has helped me. I struggled. 
that day when I went home after Christmas. Thank you. Amen. Please, all the giving platforms. Okay. To avoid me, I've given my own Adonai. But anyway, the rest, if you are given, please give it to the PIWC platform so that for easily, so that we can easily tabulate. If by chance you're on the Adonai platform and you're for already giving, that is okay also. And please add regional offering. Hallelujah. 200, 500,000, 2,000. Give, give, give. Pray over yours and come and give. Some have already started giving. No song. Please come. Amen. After you finish praying, you can come and give. Once you are done, then we, we, are, we are ready to go. Amen. Elder Bath for 500. Overseer Caleb, 1,000. Elder Labi Mensa, 500. Dickness Rose Butcher, 200. You see how the giving is going, right? It's going good. Dickness Elizabeth, a CMI, a thousand. Elder Ike Labi, a thousand. We want to just raise this 20,000 real quickly. If you've prayed over yours, please come and give. Amen. Pray over yours and come and give. You can play some tunes as... In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament, when the Holy Spirit came on the church, when the Holy Spirit came on the church, the Bible says that the spirit of giving fell on the church. There was spirit of giving. And somebody dared try, Ananias and Sapphira, they dared try to make what God had made holy. They tried to bring in uh, another spirit, which was lying and not being authentic. Please, those outside, uh -huh, if they've not given, come and give. I prefer that you give before you go. Instrumentalists, we are giving to. Amen. All the youth, all my, my youth, my, uh -huh, you've started working, you are making good money need to teach you. Amen. You, some of them are very rich. Very, very rich. Start giving to God now. Hallelujah. Let's all be on our feet. If you pray over yours, come and give it, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pray over yours and come and give. Mm -hmm. If you gave on the only of the online platform, just to make me feel good and to make God know that you're giving, just come and tap. Uh -huh. Just come and tap. Let's tap from the back. Just come and do what you got to do. In the next two minutes, we want to be done. Mm -hmm. All the way from the back. Don't, don't say that. As for me, I'm poor. Never, ever say that. The Lord is looking at your heart. What do you want to give to him? If you are poor, the Lord knows. He said, the poor widow, she gave. The Lord knows. But still, give. Hallelujah. If you can give and stretch your faith, also do it. Stretch your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Have we all given? Thank you, Lord. In the Lord always praising the Lord always praising the Lord Ooh, with all your heart. The way you are blessed, don't sit there like be smiling and coming. My guy, God bless you. Oh, praising the Lord. Let's all be on our air. Hallelujah. Oh, this is the act of our worship and sacrifice. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Oh, it all, yeah. oh, praise in the Lord. Have you given? Oh, praise in the Lord. Praise Him. By all means, give something. Oh, praise in the Lord. Pray. And if you are giving, also write regional week. I think they will know, but write regional week so that we know how to demarcate it. With all your heart. Praise in the Lord. 
went on. Oh, praising the Lord, praising. My God, thank you. Ah, oh, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, praising. Oh. Yes, Lord, it's good. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord, it's good. Yes. He's good. Yes, Lord, it's good. Yes. Yes, Lord, it's good. Ah, yes, Lord, it's good. Oh, yes, Lord, it's good. We are about to pray. We are about to pray, but if you have not given last call, if you have given on the, um, the giving platforms, God bless you. Some of you are looking, hoping for an open door. Open door. Give, and God will open that door. God knows what he's doing. God knows your story. One of my cousins, I think one year, I wish I could mention the name, he was looking for the green papers. And he was spending, it was similar to your testimony, Elder. He was spending a lot of money on these lawyers to help him. And I think one day in a church service like this, he was like, God, I've been spending all my money. Lord, I'm not going to spend and go to these lawyers again. That money that I'm going to give to the lawyer, I'll put in the offering bowl. Just like that. Things shifted for him. Somebody may you shift. Shifting. Shifting. Somebody said shift. Shift. Yeah. Shift, shift, shift. God wants somebody to shift. Shift things. Hallelujah. Amen. We are praying. Thank God. Rabba Shanda Lababa. Father, in the name of Jesus. You are a covenant keeping God. Mago Rabba Shandi. Lebre Kundayana Makabaya. Magyadya Basia Tabayada. The way God has blessed you. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you'll be our protector. You'll be our provider. You'll be our guarantor. My God. This is powerful. My provider. Say, my provider. Say, my provider. My provider. My protector. My protector. My guarantor. My guarantor. That is it. If God is guaranteeing your business, ah, it's going to be good. This year is going to be good for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you be our protector. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank you that he's going to be your protector. Your protector, your guarantor. I mean it. Shift things this morning. Let your giving touch God. Lord, I love you. That is why I care. Lebe kene me kapaya, mo tele bele 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 bele, ben tele bele 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 bele. You want the door to open? Attach your faith. If you have already given, you can give again. It's okay. Say the Lord, I'm giving this seed an assignment. Don't eat your seed. Don't eat your seed. Give it an assignment. And say the Lord, something will shift. Something will shift. Something will shift. We are talking about giving that open doors. Giving that open doors. Giving that gives returns. That is what your people have done this morning. And so Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lift up your hands and I'm praying it to a, 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 a blessing over your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, the Lord, you have spoken to our hearts. Thank you, the Lord, we are going to make good decisions with our money. And you are going to be the number one person when it comes to our money. Thank you, the Lord, going forward, we will make good decisions. And our decision is going to include you. Because, Lord, if we invest in you, we are going to get a good return. I bless your name. I bless your name. Thank you for the people that are willing and I've given. Thank you, Lord, that nobody's here that did not give. 
take it alone. Even if we came out of our poverty, Lord, this will change. Take it alone. If we gave out of our need, Lord, you will meet needs this morning. Take it alone. If we gave expecting a breakthrough, Lord, may that be a breakthrough. May things turn around for our favor. May your name be glorified, oh God. Be exalted, oh God. From a heart of praise. From a heart of love. And we say, oh Lord, you are our protector. You are our provider. You are our guarantor. And therefore, Lord, we have given unto you on this special giving day. May you bless us. May you bless us, oh God. May you bless us, oh God. May you open doors, oh God. May you show our blessings, oh God. We thank you for all what you have done and all what you continue to do in the name of Jesus. Let the saints of God shout a big amen. Amen. Shout a big amen. Amen. Give it God up. Let's give it up unto the Lord. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you for your I mean, faithfulness unto God. It's time for announcement and we welcome the AV team. Welcome to Reality Team, Emily. I'm glad you decided to join us for church today. If this is your first time visiting with us, please fill out your Connect card and hand it to one of the ushers after the service has concluded. Here are your announcements for the week. Our local ministries will be meeting this week at various times. Monday, the children's ministry will be meeting from 7 to 9 on Zoom on Tuesday. The youth ministry will be leading from 7 to 8.30 p.m. on the church Zoom. On Wednesday, the evangelism ministry will be leading from 7 to 8.30 on the church Zoom. And on Thursday, the women's ministry will be leading on the church Zoom from 7 to 9. Please note that due to the local ministry week, our new members class will not be meeting on Thursday. This Friday, we're having our prayer work service from 7 to 9 p.m. It will be in person and streamed on YouTube. Please make sure you do your best time. On Saturday, the men's ministry will be leading the service from 7 to 9 p.m. The location is to be determined. Please stay tuned. And please note that due to ministry week activities, that SWAT meeting will be canceled for this week. On Sunday, we'll eclipse the week with our weekly service. Please make sure you do your best to attend in person. But if not, we'll be streaming the service on YouTube. From February 27th to March 3rd, we'll be having a family life week. And on February 29th, we'll be having our 11th hour prayer. Save the day. From March 29th to March 31st, we'll be having our annual Easter convention. Please stay attentive for more details. And here are birthdays for the week. Please reach out to these people and make them feel special on their day. Happy birthday and God bless you. Once again, Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our website, and follow us on Instagram. Thank you for joining us. My name is Christopher Pia, and I hope you have a blessed week. Give it up unto the Lord, somebody. Just give it up. Amen, amen. So do we have any first-time visitors worshiping with us? Let's show by hand. Any first-time visitors? Oh, can you please be upstanding? Hallelujah. And let's welcome, give him a welcome. Hallelujah. Yes, we give him a welcome. Hallelujah. Um, can you please give him the mic so that he can introduce himself and uh, the reason why he's here? Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Edward Nanaya Mwafo. Um, I actually came here to be a member. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Give it up unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, we love you. Hallelujah. So, you are welcome. This is PIWC, Silver Spring, Maryland. We love you as our brother. And after service, I know we have the elders over here. They're going to take care of you. Hallelujah. So, don't rush to go. Amen.
And I also believe, I don't know whether they have it. You don't need to rush. They have some pastries over there. After service, you can go over there and enjoy yourself over there. Hallelujah. It was good worshiping with you. We know for sure that the Lord is going to bless you this week. The Lord is going to be with you. He's going to pronounce his blessing upon you. He's going to minister his angels to lead you. Hallelujah. Can you please just have a seat, brother? Amen. Give a clap of hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, so like I said, this week is going to be a fruitful week. Amen. The blessings of the Lord is going to follow us. Amen. Wherever you are going, our Lord is already taking care of you. Amen. So you don't have to be afraid. The Spirit of God is with you. Hallelujah. Also, don't forget, last Friday, the service was awesome. Last Friday, the evening service. Please, if you are home, please try and let's come together and praise the Lord and also pray. Hallelujah. We are praying unto our God because we don't know what is you know, inside 2024. It takes the grace of God that we are still on our feet. So if you are home Fridays, please, let's come to church and let's pray together. Amen. Okay, so um, we are bringing the service to a close. Can you please be on your feet, everyone? And we're calling upon our sister Lois J uh, to give us the closing prayer. Please be on your feet. close our eyes as I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for us from the beginning of this service until the, the end, oh God. We thank you, oh Lord, for everything that you've done. I commit this week to your hands, oh Lord, that everything that we're going to do, oh Lord, is in your hands. As we go to school, as we go to work, please, Lord, protect us, guide us, and keep us, oh Lord, so that when we reach Sunday again. We'll give you all the praise and adoration, oh God. We thank you for everything that you've done and everything you will do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Amen. We, we don't know how much we made yet, right? All right. I think we'll still go home. I believe that we made it. Amen. amen. My faith is stretched out all the way. But next week, we'll definitely let you know. Amen. But the giving is still continuing. Every prayer that we've said over the giving is still is in effect. Please do your best to give on all the giving platforms. Hallelujah. And please, right after church, please don't talk to only people that you know. I beg you. Talk to people that you don't know. Uh -huh. Somebody you don't know. Thank you for correcting me. Somebody you've not spoken to before. Hallelujah. Amen. I think you know everybody, but some people you have not spoken to them before. So please, don't gravitate only towards the ones that you usually speak to. Speak to somebody that you barely speak to. Amen. Amen. And also, please, let's spend time in the fellowship area and have a good time. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands. And also, please, the calendar. There is calendar for all the families, especially the Adonai families. Your calendars, we have it here. Please come and grab one. If you're a Church of Pentecost, PIWC Silver Spring member, you need a Church of Pentecost calendar in your house. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, I said you need a Church of Pentecost calendar. Uh -huh. Please, right after church, come and grab one. So that when people come, they know the church you go to. If there's extra, we'll give you some for your office. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let them know you go to church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's lift up. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. <laughs> God, you're good. Thank you for this week. Somebody, as the elder was speaking, I realized that somebody, maybe you might be suffering from the regret of some bad financial decisions that you have made. That is not the end of you. This is a morning that the Lord broke off something off of you. Use that and run with it. Please, run with it. You will not be a victim of your bad decisions. For one minute, pray that prayer. Elder, you, you hit on some great stuff. There is the year of Jubilee. There is a sabbatical year. But I'm especially imputing you into both the sabbatical year and the year of Jubilee. Where debts will be cancelled in a divine manner. Where God will give you the grace. And you fulfill and you meet all obligations. That is the God we serve. I will not be a victim of my bad decisions. Lord, after you have suffered a while. Uh, today, somebody enter your rest. 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 Maybe you have maybe not been faithful in your titan. Elder made a great confession. And I'll confess too. I have messed up some time. But Lord has been faithful. I stand here as a testament. 
and God has made most of you a testament and God wants to make all of us a testament glory to God glory to God resolve that I'm going to be faithful going forward I'm not going to struggle with it I'm not going to be taught by the internet thank you Lord thank you Jesus we enter into blessings tangible blessings monetary blessings blessings of health blessings of abundance in the name of Jesus and now may the Lord who has told you that he's your provider who has told you that he's your protector who has told you that he's your guarantor may he keep you may he preserve you now and forever in Jesus name amen we love you with the love of the Lord God bless you shake somebody love on somebody meet somebody new and let's go out there and eat some food hallelujah